come from? I'm not sure. It's just a made up number. Well, I don't know if it's a made up number or maybe they're saying potentially can get this number of results uh, or something like that. I don't know exactly what. And it's not even something that big. Sometimes it'll tell me, you know, there's like 50 results. Yeah. And then I start going down through them and they're, you know, 26 or 27 and done. Yeah. Where's, where's, where's my other well, you one? notice at the bottom there are some uh, results here. It says, you know, there's 200, oh, so if you'd like, repeat the search, oh. admitted search oh. results. But that doesn't, it doesn't come up with, um, see, it, again, this is 6.9 million, which is different than 17, right? Yeah. And I'm sure if we did this exercise, I'm sure it would not go up to, because mostly these are, these search, additional search results um, are, well, we know it's going to be more than 43, but. Maybe we shouldn't spend the time to do this, but um, well, yeah, I don't, I don't, well, this would be a good Facebook question. See how many people interact to try to give an answer. <laughs> well, we can keep doing this, but I uh, should probably no. stop. No. But anyway, so the, the, actually, most of those admitted results are sub pages of websites they've already shown. And if they're omitted, that means they actually admitted for a reason that because they don't feel the quality. It's related, but it's not. You know, precise that right that that relevant. So uh, now we learn that we cannot, even though they're a great company, we don't necessarily trust the search results they show uh, when we're doing an exact keyword search. They are, however, a great company, and I love their products. I mean, even all the time. For the record, in case anybody's listening. Yes. So there's 17 that you, if you just do a, a general keyword search, tell you there's 17 million. Oh, I'm sorry, if you do a quoted search result, they get a 17 million. But in reality, we know, we know that there's more. So just to recap, uh, we covered using the uh, is it find the keyword tool, uh, enter a keyword or a problem. Uh, I would recommend doing exact. And if you have no idea, using the phrase that can actually give you ideas. Okay, so if you don't know, that's why the phrase is important is because if you're trying to type a problem, it can actually give you ideas. But when you're trying to pick a keyword to actually optimize your website or your blog post for, I'd recommend doing the exact search because you, don't, you want to know how many people are, are searching for that exact word, not a combination of that keyword and other words in there. Well, since we have such a small group today, yeah. does anybody, do we have time to help anybody? Um, I don't know how long the presentation is. If there's somebody that's going, I don't have a clue what I should can put we, in there is can we wait till the end? Sure. Mm -hmm. That'll be a question at the end. If anybody wants help. Can I ask about the part of the strategic? Yes. I'm not following. So if you do the exact, you're you, you're trying to find something that has a lot of results so you know it's a popular subject, or <clears throat> are you looking for something that doesn't have so many because it's overcrowded? Well, Actually, I was going to cover that in the, oh, okay. in the keyword <laughs> ideas. Uh, the number of, of competition, the number of search results is really, that's, uh, some people say if you look for keywords between 3,000 and 10,000 search volume, and the reason for that is that most of these keywords, the competition may not be as, as very high as something that's, that has a lot more search results. Okay? So um, I think for a blog post, it, it will be okay if it has anything above 500, honestly, search results. And this is to help you find a subject to write about? Yes. Okay. Related to a specific problem that you were brainstorming about, right? To see, so you, you find out what a problem, you know that computer virus is a problem for people, and then you, from that you find out, well, how are people trying to find information about that particular problem? So this is where the keyword to try to identify actually a keyword. Okay. Um, so, when you're trying to find a keyword, I recommend using the exact, and then look through the keyword ideas underneath the, the, the numbers. And uh, remember that you're trying to optimize for one keyword per blog post, so the search volume may not be that high, right? Uh, so some people say volume less than 10,000. Now the minimum, I don't know. Uh, that depends on, you know, it, it's worth testing, I think, in your, in your market, whether that's 500, whether that's 1,000 search volume. You want to do less than 10,000? Yes. Otherwise, it's too crazy. Uh, after that, it becomes, <coughs> if it's that high of a search volume, you know it's a generic keyword. Because mm. you, you want to find something <coughs> very specific. Right? But then again, if you find a, a good keyword that has 100,000 search volume, 
and then the quoted search results, you only have two, which obviously isn't possible. But if you do that, then hey, you found a gem, right? You found a really good keyword that would be really easy to write for. Did you say 100,000? Yeah, I was just giving a many example. 10,000. Less than 10,000. Less than 10,000. Okay, so now um, repeat. The, the last step I added on is <coughs> one three. So now let's say you find what is a computer virus, okay? But maybe that's still a general keyword. Maybe you don't want to spend time to define what a computer virus is, but maybe you can enter that into the keyword search again and see what other related search words there are, right? So you can keep that process to kind of refine to a very specific topic. And obviously, every time you add, you do a keyword search and you try to do uh, related keywords, the, the volume will probably decrease, right? So if you're looking for how, what is a computer virus, I think we find about 2,900 search volume. But then if you type, what is a computer virus? What is a um, computer virus? And then maybe a name of a virus, then you know there's going to be less than 2,900, right? Um, right, because you're adding an extra word. So does that make sense? When you do that, you have to put the parentheses around it. Uh, not in the keyword tool. In the keyword tool, you would say, say I want to search the phrase or the exact. And actually, that would be a good idea to type in what is a computer virus and then click phrase. That way, you see what other, how people are using what is a computer <coughs> virus to search. Right? And then the, the next piece is what is the competition? Because again, if you're trying to optimize a blog post, then you have to consider how many other people are trying to optimize for the same keyword. And so that's why it's important to the quoted search results, see how many people exactly are using that or searching for that specific keyword. And try to, if you, if you want to spend the time, see how many, go to the last search result page and see how many actual results that you're, you're competing against. Uh, and as you're doing this, as you're scanning, you know, that, that could be another method you can do research. As you're scanning the blog post, you don't just have to click next, next, next to find the last page. <coughs> you're also trying to survey what's out there, what information is out there about that particular keyword or that topic, what other people have covered about that. And that might give you a specific angle or a specific, um, you know, as you're, as you're trying to cover and you're, as you're writing, you're writing a new blog post, that can give you a specific angle, angle unique angle that you can present. Um, I've included this link. I, we, I don't think we'll have time to go through the specific blog post, um, but it's <coughs> livingworldbehind.com slash do you make these 13 common keyword research mistakes? Leaving work behind? Yeah. Uh, I think we'll put the slides online. Right? So we'll have yeah. access to the slides. <coughs> do it this weekend. As long as you give them to me. Whether on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the phrase, it is what it is, uh, I think some people criticize that, but sometimes it's important to say it is what it is. Just to keep in mind, this is a tool, okay? You can't rely 100% on it. Uh, it's not always accurate, and it's not always representative of the whole picture. And I've included an example here where there were some keywords that potentially were very useful, but understanding the market was really important. It was about photography. That particular blog post was talking about how they use the Google Keyword Tool to find keywords related to photography. But then if you understand the photography market, you know there are, there are photographers who are amateur, there are professionals, and understanding that market can really help you find what keywords, what stage they're in. So if you're using a keyword that seems very promising, but the target for that keyword is maybe amateurs who can't afford to maybe spend $3,000 on, on a particular piece of equipment, then you're kind of wasting your time. Does that make sense? So making sure the keyword is actually relevant to the people you're targeting is, is important. And it, I recommend reading that or maybe scanning through that blog post because it will, I think it will give some ideas on, on how you can uh, use that tool. But it has to depend on your understanding of the market. Yes? Does Google know if you're stuffing your blog post with keywords? Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. So they're going after them now. Yes. Yes. And actually, we'll cover that in a couple minutes. Turn. Stuffing. Mm -hmm. Keywords. So now. Uh, actually, yeah. keyword density is, is something that uh, people did, and pe people keyword stuff their pages, yeah. hoping that Google would say, hey, well, look, this is a great page about this particular keyword, and but it, how does it, it worked for the well. quality of the, what they're writing about. It does horrible. Yeah. It does, that, but that's not the point. The point is to rank, right? For them. Okay. okay, so you identified a good keyword. You said, okay, this is a great keyword. Let's try to rank for this. So there's two, uh, two things you can do to tell Google or search engines that this keyword 
is related to, or your blog post is related to this keyword. The first one is to include in the headline or the title of the page. And typically titles are 60 characters or less. I think after, after that number of characters, I think most search engines kind of, they get uh, distracted and they, they only read the first 60 characters. So you want to make sure that your keyword is in the first 60 characters. <coughs> the closer they are to the front, the better. Because again, with search engines, you know, they have the attention span of, of, of a search engine, so it's not very, uh, that's a joke. Uh, so you want to have, give them the keyword as close to the beginning, but also make sure that you're writing this title for a person, right? So this is how you, you have to kind of include the keyword early on as possible within must be within the first 60 characters of, of the title. Then the second thing you can include is a description. And I'll, and I'll show you an example of where these actually information go. But the description is maybe it's a little longer. It's 160 characters. But then this is where you actually describe what this page is about. OK, so again, for this, you have to appeal to both search engines because it, it, it uses this information to understand what your page is about, but also to people because I'll show you where people see that description as they're searching on Google. Uh, so make it emotional. Try to appeal to your target audience, okay? And then also it helps, I've heard this tip before, is to kind of leave it as a cliffhanger. And one example of that is just to say dot, 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 right? And that, and you know, what? They don't like ellipses, though, I'm sorry. It's, oh, no, 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 this is different. Okay. <laughs> I get stuck on ellipses with my blog when I put yeah. it on Facebook. Facebook sometimes, the, yeah, anyway. So this is an example. If you type, what is a computer virus, Microsoft comes up first, okay, or in the top search results. But just to show you what I mean, the title is the stuff in the blue, okay? So their title for that page is antivirus protection, what is a computer virus uh, dash Microsoft security, okay? And then this is a description underneath in black, okay? So their description is horrible, okay? But the people recognize Microsoft, so they click on it anyway. But if you're trying to get the attention of somebody searching for that keyword, having writing something here that appeals to them, say, are you struggling with virus X or are you struggling with this virus? Is your virus, you know, you can use something that relates to them and then you can say, here's how to fix your virus. Step one, dot, 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 right? So they have to click. You left it at step one, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to read now. What, what's step one, right? So that's the way you can leave it click Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a description, there's nothing there. It will probably pull the first two lines or the first so six characters. Say, characters. If you don't do that, I notice it takes the beginning of the post. Yes. Mm -hmm. But maybe sometimes I leave that. And That's it, fine. It, it has the right things. Okay. But sometimes I want to start it more conversationally. Exactly. And so, if you're starting, and then you put the description more keyword rich. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you're trying to use a strategy where you try to grab someone in, so someone lands in your blog post, and you start with a story about, you know, you went to the store, and so that may not be related to actually the, the title of the blog post. The keyword will not be there because you try to grab their attention using a store, using the personal experience that you had. So that may not be the best approach in description, or maybe, you know, that, again, that depends. Maybe the story, you know, if somebody, you know, if, if it's about a virus pro problem, and then the story is the first time I experienced the virus, my computer gave me the blue screen, blah, blah, blah. So that can appeal to somebody, to still to somebody. But if you're talking about a very different story to tie it in later, that may be a little confusing. Maybe people will just gloss over it and then actually click on your search result. So if you're using WordPress, and if you're not, you should be. I'm just kidding. Um, there is. Are you really kidding? This is the, this is the places where you can enter the title and the description. Okay. Um, so, if you're, is everybody familiar with this? This. Okay. So this is the standard uh, view of WordPress as you're writing a blog post or a page. Okay. So the top is the title, and then this is the body of your blog post. And then if you have a plugin called All-in-One SEO Pack, and this is just an example, there's different ones similar to it, it will let you customize the title and the description on there. So you'll be able, underneath the blog post, it will tell you what is the title and what's the description. And actually having this title is very critical because this is the title that appears in the search engine result, okay? But you can use this to your advantage because you want to have the keyword here, right? But then maybe you don't want to use the exact keyword in the actual title of your blog post. And the reason why that's important is because you want to have your blog post title appeal to somebody, right? But then the search engine could be giving a different title to the search engine that has the keyword that you want to target on. Does that make sense? So you don't have to do that. No, you don't. So it doesn't hurt you not to put the, even if it's the same, 
it's and the same, don't, and don't put, put it in both yeah. places. Uh, actually, I, I'm not sure it would hurt if you put it in both places. So maybe just out of, of habit, just put the same one, or or slightly make it different. Maybe you can move the keyword. Genesis out there. Mm -hmm. Genesis, okay. Yeah. It's, but, it's, it doesn't have all in one. It has its own. But, do I have that? Yes. So the second one, you can make, you can leave the top one more <coughs> oriented, yes. and the bottom one more search and yes. 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 Yes